after a season disrupted by injury. 2018 world champion Jeffrey Hurlings is ready to race. After dominating the early rounds, Jeffrey is red hot favorite for the championship. The question is, can he stay healthy? It's always funny when you watch back um, pictures from the past. <laughs> I was a small kid back then. Those were the good days when, when racing was a lot of fun. So Jeffrey, talk about Jeffrey, what was the first? <laughs> Jeffrey, he came to us, he was very young. I remember that many people talk about this boy that was super talented kid from Holland. And then when we get to know and work together, oh yo yo, sometimes we had some friction, some hard moments because he doesn't trust many people and very fast. Uh, it takes a lot of time for him to trust people. What's the mamma mia? Go. But then going with the years, uh, uh, I think we build up uh, a very good relation. Like when you came down the hill in that steep line. Yeah. That was okay, but it's like inside, never yeah, when you're not on the field. I've never seen anybody more focused, I think, on his sport than Jeffrey does. He holds the bike so tight. His whole life is, is motocross. He needs to live motocross 24 hours a day, only focused on racing. 15. There is no holiday. You gotta go all out war 24 7. Jeffrey, he, his life is motocross at the moment and training. Tony, he also go out, he go fishing, you know. He can uh, relax and also enjoy life better. And instead, with Jeffrey, he's, let's say, focused, too focused at the point. I miss a lot of, like, normal life, let's say, like, because I'm 25 now and I'm still single. I don't really have time to really build up a family or things like that when you want to go all out and all in. For me, it's, it's normal like this. He has, he has a big heart, like he has a, and a very, very high uh, pain level. I really have so much desire to win, and I'm, I'm willing, like, if I go 100%, then if I have to go 105, I don't mind doing it, because if that's the last little piece to win, I've been going all that way, then to go a little extra, I don't mind doing it. I go all the way, or I don't go at all, so. That's about it. Thank you. There you go, mate. Have a have, have happy race and uh, have fun. Thank you, mate. Don't fall. Don't fall. <laughs> Jeffrey Hurlings had his 2019 torpedoed by injuries, but comes into 2020 fighting. He started the season, you know, we all thought 100%. Throughout the year was really weird. You know, we had the first two races in March. I won both of them. Jeffrey Hurlings leaves here victorious. Victorious here on home soil at Malcolm's Ward once again. And you can see what it means to him. He's proven more than once that he can be the fastest and the strongest and the fittest. Jeffrey Arms, to be honest. This is the top guy right now in the world. And then we disappeared into lockdown. He took it rather easy in the lockdown. He didn't push too hard. the race again. He was collecting so good points. The Red Bull KTM will take victory here. After six races, being 60 points in front, that's a lot. Five months later, two times fourth, fifth overall. 
in all cases, that's yeah, still awesome, still holding the red plate. Jeffrey Hurley maintains his grip on the championship leader's red plate. He was the guy who deserved you know, to, to stay in front of the championship because he was winning the most. Yeah, that was a blast for everybody. But then after that... Uh, Hello everybody, welcome to Italy, round seven of the FIM Motocross World Championship. <laughs> Jeffrey Hurlings was your winner here on Sunday with his 90th Grand Prix victory. <laughs> Jeffrey Hurlings, the Rebel KTM rider, brought he'd done enough to go top. So the whole body came, they folded over, and this did that overstretching. Just uh, still talking about it, 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 yeah, you still get cold feelings in the back because uh, you're not talking about the sports career, then you're talking about life. We were hearing the helicopters and everything, and everybody was talking in the paddock that uh, he didn't feel his body for a couple of minutes. We never saw something like that. I still remember when I when I jumped, there was a lot of lines behind the jump, and my neck went uh, backwards. When I landed, like I didn't have movement straight away. I tried to get up, but you can see, like I'm not able to get up. Like I, I wanted to leave, I wanted to leave because I didn't have pain, which is normal because I didn't feel anything, but I just couldn't, and that was the scariest thing ever happening, you know. Man, when I see this, it just makes me want to cry. And I'm, 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 it's very hard to watch, you know. You see yourself laying down on the ground, and I've witnessed it in real, and it's one of the scariest things ever happening. <laughs> but as we said, he has since been stretched off. When he crashed, it was in practice, so he wasn't even pushing. I think to escape the crash that he had, I think he was pretty lucky in consideration to what actually happened. The accident puts an end to Jeffrey's season but he's lucky to escape without more serious injuries. It took him a while and then we called him uh, every second day and so on, how it's going and yeah, then he was really down there. When you are all alone at home and it settles in, yeah, he was, he was gutted, he was done. <sighs> So uh, I felt good racing. I felt I felt like I could fight for the championship again. And basically, I should have won this championship once again. But due to injury, you know, I lost it. And um, that was season ending. If he was in the championship fight this year, I think things, you know, the season would have looked very different. As a rival, you know, you, you never wish to someone to get injured. That's, that's definitely a sad side of our sport, you know. Part of the reason for Jeffrey's crash was that he hadn't fully recovered from the foot injury that finished his 2018 campaign. To fix it for good, he needs more surgery and many more months on the sidelines. Once you have some multiple injuries, you start to look at the sport differently, you, you start to look at life different, and you don't want to take that major risk anymore. <laughs> He's learning now also to relax a bit, but it took him a couple of years. I think the last two years I put it so much pressure on myself, worked so hard, and twice I messed up. And it just went backwards. So I just try to go out and see it as fun and see it as something I love doing. After a while, you, you see slowly the fire coming back, and then at one point he said, yeah, that was not it yet. I have more to show, and I have more to prove, and I'm going to be back. Since 
12 when I started and 20 now. Yeah, Jeffrey's changed. He's become wiser, smarter, calmer. Also with what he's gone through, he's learnt from it, let's say. Time went fast and now I think it's, yeah, he changed a lot. You good? All right. Thanks, boys. And I, I'm just going to use it as, as, as my hobby, like, like it started, like doing it for fun. And if I can win, I'll win. If not, I just want to enjoy racing. I want to enjoy riding back again. What he's had to go through and to come back from that, it just shows you how much determination and how hungry he is to win. It's unbelievable. I got so much motivation to just come back and show them what I'm capable of and I know this, this injury will be fully healed and I know I can still be back, get the best out of my career and, and run races. I don't regret what I've done. All the time I've put it in, all the traveling I had to do, all the sacrifice I had to make. It doesn't matter, I love doing it and I still love doing it today.